Reductio ad absurdum, otherwise known as argumentum ad absurdum. It's a form of argument seeking a statement's truth by showing that a false or observed result follows from its denial. Basically, it's proving that something is true by taking the opposite approach. Now, I want to use this approach while explaining what I think are things that money cannot die by. But before we dive in, I want to talk about what buying is. Buying is the process of obtaining something by relinquishing another thing that has a similar or higher market value. In a dollar store, you can buy most things at a dollar. Cars cost around ten to twenty thousand dollars, and vinyl these days is about thirty bucks. Then we squeeze in concepts such as financial derivatives, debt purchase, swap option, etc., just to make the buying experience more painful. And when you finally arrive at the bottom of the list, you'll probably notice that most things in life are purchasable, one way or the other, and it's very hard to find something that isn't. Which is why I want to use the reductio ad absurdum approach. To identify the things that can't be obtained through money, it's better to examine the ways we acquire things without it. When money can't buy us something, we're forced to do one of three things. Make it ourselves, steal it, or earn it. Anything that falls into these categories are hence things that money cannot buy. So let's examine them one by one. First, make it ourselves. In life, there are a handful of things we spend our energy on making. A family is one of them. From time to time, it becomes our greatest blessing and our darkest curse. We don't get to choose our siblings, parents, or children, and yet we fight tooth and nail in trying to make the best family because they build up the foundation of what we call home, which is a place where characters are built, good things are shared, and our missteps are unconditionally forgiven. Now, we also spend much of our effort trying to make friends. Two roads diverge in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, the road not taken by Robert Frost. Now, I haven't lived long enough yet to fully appreciate what this means, but many grown-ups I've spoken with were in shy to express that life is a lonely endeavor and that we constantly seek to make friends in order to make the journey more endurable. Second, we steal. And the most commonly stolen item is ideas. Picasso had a saying, good artists copy and great artists steal. Christopher Nolan's film Inception is also about mercenary stealing and or implanting ideas in a person's mind. I'm a big believer in stealing ideas as opposed to genuine inspiration. The graphical user interface in computers originally came from the Stanford Research Institute and was subsequently stolen by Xerox Park. Then Apple stole from Xerox to develop the Macintosh, and Microsoft stole from Apple and developed Windows. We always steal ideas. Now, we also steal people's hearts. When I was in middle school, uh, there was a boy named John. He was handsome, tall, and awfully kind for a 14-year-old. He stole my heart. Now, I also inadvertently stole a handful of other boys' hearts, but most of them ended up having hearts that I honestly didn't want to steal. And maybe that's why I'm still single. And third, earning it. Now this is the toughest and yet most rewarding way we obtain things. People say we earn money or a degree or an erroneous social status or title. But what we're really trying to earn are loyalty and respect. We crave for others' affection, and we yearn for people's commendation and praise. And we often end up confusing them as equal to loyalty and respect, when in fact, they're not. Loyalty is not what one would do for another when asked, but rather what one would do even without asking. And respect is the fuel that fires that spirit. We work extremely hard to earn these two qualities from others and often end up confusing them as equal to the other things that we aim for. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things that we make, steal, or earn that mainly include but are not limited to family, friends, ideas, one's heart, loyalty, and respect. These are the things that money cannot buy. 
We live in a world notoriously entrenched in a swamp of materialism, accompanied with the notion that money can buy everything. Who would have known half a century ago that we would spend money buying water? Maybe 50 years later, the things that I mentioned today might also be on sale. But I hope not, because our fear of losing these things makes us strive to work harder every day. To me, they're the most important gems in life, and I hope they are to you too. Thank you. This is